thank him this morning because I appreciate him he's worthy of our thanks he's worthy of our praise he's worthy of our adoration on behalf of our mothers can we say thank you for keeping them for seeing them true for his strength and sustenance upon them father we say thank you we say thank you for every mother. We say thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, O God. We appreciate you, O God. We appreciate you, O God. We are gathered this morning just to say thank you. To celebrate the gift of mothers. The gift you have given to us, O God. We thank you, Lord. Truly thank you. Truly thank you. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' righteous name we have thanked. If you believe that, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. On behalf of every mother, celebrate Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be gorgeously seated. And I join my voice in saying happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. Our mothers-to-be. Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to celebrate our mothers today. We can't, you wouldn't, we can exhaust in trying to articulate what mothers and who mothers are to our lives. We but only say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. And I want to thank the women for the outing today. I want, yeah, if you want to do it, do it. I want to celebrate every woman, every mother, every lady, every young person, every everyone. You know, I personally am very skeptical when you say you want to do drama, drama in church. I am a very, I'm very, you will, I, I have fought with mommy B at home and say, you see, there are, for me, Sunday service is a worship service. Let's come and just do it. Every other extras actually doesn't resonate with me. That's just the truth with me. If we come on Sunday, let's keep it to the worship and we go home. Praise the Lord. But, you know, um, I stand to say that I learned today that we should allow certain things. You know, one of the one of the sign of a failure is never admitting that you were wrong. And it, it is pride that does not allow God to lift people because even in your wrong, you claim right. You know, we cannot be God in as much as we serve God. And you cannot determine how God will communicate. How many of us know through the drama there was they were they were visual communication that we got, we got. It, the, for me, that is the preaching of today. So for me not to, to think that because we, I don't know what God required. Moses said to Pharaoh, and this I want to say to us as we follow God, because sometimes many of us are too spiritual that we begin to advocate for God. Moses said to Pharaoh, we do not know what God will require of us in the journey. The truth is this, as much as you follow God, you cannot fully know what he requires, but if you are open enough, you will receive what he has given. And for me, it's a lesson to know, because if you know me, I'm this straight jacket person, let's do this, let's do this. No, when God allows, I want to thank God also for the, the, the wife he has given me, who is always patient. When we will never argue with you, about those things. Because you see, if she had argued with me, I will cancel it. Then, because if she had argued with me, the pride of a man, and the one that I will now begin to say, you know, I'm the pastor of John, the leader, okay, it's canceled. And do you know, if I have done that, even God in his infinite mercy will look at me as one, will look at me as a very foolish husband and a foolish leader. He won't do anything. I will not even know that God has done anything, but I'll be claiming, yes, I canceled it. Praise the Lord. But I thank God when God gives you a very wise wife, he doesn't argue with you when you are wrong. He doesn't say to you you are wrong. But because of the way he takes it, will make you come around. 
And that is also one thing I want us to learn as, as women and as even men, as it were, because it is not one-sided, it is both ways. Amen. So we want to thank those who put the drama together. We want to thank God for those, those of you who acted in the drama. You actually ministered to us. You did minister to us. God bless you. God will increase you. God will make your home what you want to see. Amen. Hallelujah. So one of the take home of the drama as well is the wife that is always complaining before she gets home. Your mouth is part of the problem. <laughs> You can't be going home and say this home again. Declare what you want to see. <laughs> but thank God. And also, we also know, also, you need to also know, praise the Lord, that if the man did not have a good friend, if the man, and association matters, women pray that God will always position the right people before your husband. Because if he does not have a good friend who advises, you know, who advises him aright? He will not come back. If he has somebody who supports his foolishness, praise the Lord, he will always come back home and be foolish. But when he has somebody who has influenced him, who said this, it takes, there are many things that God does not tell us. He uses human to tell us. There are right people, there are wrong people, but I promise you association is very, very potent. We must be very careful with association. Okay, so thank you. All that said already. We're just going to please the, the, fam, the, the service might extend a little bit beyond our normal closing time, but not so much because we also need to do communion. We also need to pray. Okay, but we will do our best to make sure we keep in time. And I was saying to Mombi today, it pains me when people said to me the service was long because I wouldn't want to take anybody's time. If, as a human being, I need to say it from the altar. I do not consciously want to keep anybody in church. So it pains me when I get feedback and say, that service was so long. Our service is not so long. Ago. We, do, we, we don't do service long. I wouldn't want to keep anybody. So I want to apologize in, in front. That, that's why I cut off. And if you, remember, if you see that you're in the program that you were removed, I had to say to Esther Shenwu, we, we, if we allow everything to flow, the service will be too long. At the end, it is me that people will tell you make service long, so remove. So I apologize to those who, if you wanted to do something today, you were not allowed to do. I duly apologize. I asked her to remove it. Amen. But I thank God. You will still do what God has laid in your heart to do. Okay, so there was an announcement I just want to hum on before I go into the word. I'll be very brief as much as I can. I will be brief as I can. Praise the Lord. And um, next Saturday is Deacon's Evelyn's Father's Service of Song. Praise the Lord on the 16th of... Uh, why are you clapping? What happened? They are burning somebody. You are clapping. Praise the Lord. We are telling you that... Uh, don't clap for me. I didn't say anything. But there is somebody lost the father. You are clapping. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, they just hear and do what we say. Okay, but at least he... he, he somebody who gave birth to the girl's evening. And he has stayed. Now, what is the occupying space? Praise the Lord. I know. So, it's celebration of life. But don't clap. Don't, don't clap at everything. Okay. But you see, one of the things we do as a family, we must make sure that the burden of the service of song is not just borne by her, we will, uh, sorry, which I know we'll do. But most importantly, is that correct? Whatever it is, it's compulsory for every member to come here and stand with her on Saturday by 4 p.m. It will, be, it, will, it will not be right that visitors will come and her own family are not here. We are her family. Am I communicating? 4 p.m. on Saturday, everybody must be here. So when visitors come, they will know she has family. Praise the Lord. Okay. So we'll do that. And also, we will also, I will, I will also like to say this, please. What we do is that we know that she's going to do a lot of things back home. She's the eldest daughter. As, as she's coming from, uh, uh, from Europe. They just think that she plucked money from the tree and she's bringing the beginning. So please let let us support her. So at that their thinking will be true. Uh, so please, when you're coming on Saturday, this is you are not obligated, but I'm just saying, put something in an envelope and say, This is my little support to what you're going to do. It's expensive when you come from our side. Praise the Lord. They demand and most when they say you flew, they just think that you flew with all the money in Europe. But let support her so that at least when she gets there. So please, um, even while we are going to take offering on that day, let it not be that what you will do. Let your own be in the envelope. Let these visitors who do offering 
He, it doesn't matter. And I want to say things. People ask me. They say, what if what I want to give is too small? Give it. Because it's in the gathering that it is much. If you say your own is too small, you hold it. You have with head the plus one. So please let everybody, you are not under obligation, please. It is not a pardon. It is me just saying, not tomorrow now. You go and kill your some somebody. You say, because they will donate money for you. You rather the person stay. So I do not donate money for you. So I, I don't want to hear, uh, then the day my father will die, they will still donate. You want to kill your father? Hallelujah, we don't kill anybody. It's just as it comes in my spirit, we will do amen. Okay, so please, Saturday by 4, it will be my joy that we see everybody. I was trying to, I'm not going to preach, but I just want to admonish our mothers. I was trying to look for a, a better word to, to define who a mother is. I've started communicating now. A better word to communicate who a mother is. And I, I was saying to Moimbi, I find it hard. I couldn't find any word to really express who a mother is. Uh, even Google in itself was not helping. You know, Google definition of a mother was not accurate to who a mother is because when I look at Google definition of a mother and I I, I, I put it uh, in line with, or I just suppose it with, with, with the mothers that it's not, it's not matching at all. Because the mothers I know, they, they go beyond the definition that one can give. So I came to a conclusion that it is not possible to define who a mother is. There's so much in a mother that you can't define. You can't use one word. You can't even use multitudes of words to actually articulate who a mother is. Praise the Lord. And you know that being a mother is not just because you gave birth. It's much more be beyond that. It's much more because if you, if you think that by giving birth makes you a mother, by biological uh, uh, reproduction of a baby, no. But uh, you see, there are people who did not biologically give birth to to, to children, but they were mother to those children. How many of us know that? So it is not just biological reproduction that makes one a mother. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. Mothers, one cannot. Today there will be, there will be an attempt to articulate who a mother is and what it means to be a mother, but I think that even in, in trying to put it in words, actually express, expunges, and shows the failure of our understanding of who this person is. Our mothers are too much. They are beyond words. Hallelujah. And I believe it takes maturity to come to that understanding of who your mother is. You must grow to know your mother. As a child, it is not possible. Do you know that one of the things I came to find out that the mother pillow is filled with tears? Hallelujah. It's filled not just tears of sorrow, but tears of joy. What mothers do is unexplainable. One cannot articulate it. I, got it. I just hope that the person is not watching. But these are people who follow us. But I got a message for a, from a mother by 4 a.m. in the morning. I was saying to Mommy B, uh, by 4 a.m. in the morning, and the mother said to me, Pastor, look at the time I am calling. I said this can only be a mother. The mother's heart is a heart that carries the children even to the end of time. A mother never leaves their children. No matter how old the child has become, the mother still carries the child in their heart. Hallelujah. Not just, do you know, the mother not just the child till the end of time. A father disengages when the child becomes an adult, but the mother still holds on. You meet a mother on her knee. Hear what she's saying. Not speaking about herself. All you see in her mouth is my children. My family. My children. My family. Selfless. I want to use a scripture to just share one or two things. And you know because those of us who are also going to be mothers in the future. You must understand what it is. That not because you gave birth that qualifies you. But there's much more. I know if you look at the word mother. Tell you nurturing. Nutri no that's not it. That is much more than that. Those words are just words that can be captured for the sake of definition. But your mother is worth more than that. Much more than that. I like, I like, thank you for the poems that were 
Sir, thank you, Inasha. Thank you, Enoch. Thank you, Bula. Bula, did you write your poem? Yes, that's I know. I know all of you wrote your poem, but I, I because I know they told me you write poems. That's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Thank you, the poems that were said. Mothers and warriors who go to war smiling. Hallelujah. Thank God for our mothers. Now, if, if one of the uh, one of the exemplary mothers that that I want to look at, and I'm not going to you just from uh, Exodus two from verse two is Jochebed. Jochebed for me is one of the mothers that stands out among all mothers. Jochebed was 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 a great woman. You see, the the. The, if you look at Exodus 2 from verse 1, the Bible says, And there went out a man of the house of the Levi, and took wife of the daughter of the, of the Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she, she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. I, I don't want to read more, but you just see what the story is. Now, remember that Jacob's story started from the third child. This is not the first child of Jacob was Aaron. The second child was Miriam. And the third child is Moses. But the story started from Moses. Because at the time Jacob gave birth to Moses was a precarious time. It was a time where every male child was to be killed. Was to be killed. That was an order from Pharaoh that every male child should be killed. But Jacob determined that her child would not die. You know, one of the things I want to say to you, don't ever try to fight against a determined mother. When a mother makes up her mind, she's a lioness. Hallelujah. She determined that her child will not be killed. And not only that her child will not be killed, that the very one that has posed danger upon her child will be the very one that will nurture her child. Somebody said, don't joke with mothers. The very one who had planned the danger. You know, women, sometimes when we want to do certain things and ask mommy be to go, she say, why? Well, I say, honey, hear me. If I go there, they speak English, I'll, be, I'll leave. But if you go there, they won't speak. I know, we know our word. You want to, I say, this case is for you. Go. Hallelujah. <laughs> I won't say this because I'm online. I would have said something that, that somebody asked me a question that, what did what did mommy B do? <laughs> you know, hallelujah. Don't you joke with a determined mother. A mother who had made up her mind will get whatever I want. That is why every time I pray, I say, God, raise for us praying mothers. Mothers who know how to win on their knees. When a mother bends her knee and says, God, my children, God better be attentive. Because that woman is not ready to live until God moves. I, there's a, a, one of the men of God that gave a testimony. I said when he was young, he was into all kinds of things. He was into youthful foolishness, not exuberance. It's youthful foolishness. Destroying himself, he will come home drunk at night. He said every time he's coming home, the mother's door will always be ajar and the mother will be on her knee and begin to pray and say, Lord God, my son will serve you. And when he hears the son, when the son sees the mother doing that, he will mock the mother. But the mother will never turn to him but begin to declare my son will serve you he said he didn't know when he started serving god because the mother never gave up honey tell somebody don't joke with a determined mother the woman jacob said this child one of the great first thing is this mothers know their children do you know that the bible says she knew that this is a goodly child that is why sometimes you see the father shouting and the mother will say honey calm down she will be okay Come down, he will be okay. And you are saying because the man is speaking from what he's seeing, the woman is speaking from what she knows. A real mother knows their children because she knows that the children will never become what she does not want them to become. 
what she is saying is that don't worry that this one is still in my hand i know where to position him i know where to position her so the man is shouting the woman said don't worry honey that time you are sleeping you don't know what i'm doing i'm taking care of my home i am holding my home the woman does not just keep home by cooking by providing by cleaning no the woman is the true homekeeper who determines the outcome the Bible says concerning the Proverbs woman. He said because of her, the husband will sit at the gate. Some of us men, you are sitting because the woman is kneeling. You are celebrated. Because, you know, sometimes, you and I, I want to really beg us, don't become this man who say, I don't know how to cook, I don't know how to clean, I don't know how to, you are sitting at home and your wife come and say, come and give me food. You are, you only be eating. Hallelujah. You only be eating. All you'll be doing, I don't think any male raised in my house will marry a wife and you'll be expecting your wife to do everything. It means you did not learn anything. Hallelujah. The woman says, I know. I know. You know, even some of us who, I got married as a pastor, I was already pastoring when I got married. But when I got married, I understood that there is a role that my wife will play that I cannot play even with me, be the man of God. Hallelujah. So I know, the first thing the real mother does is to know their children. Any mother that does not know their children is a mother that is not, is not a servant. You know. You know the progression. You know changes. You know things. You need to know so that you will know what is needed at that time. Secondly, she knew where to position her child. She made a broom basket and she knew she didn't just keep it in the Nile. She kept it at a place where Pharaoh's daughter, because she has in her mind where her child is supposed to be. A real mother is the one that, pro, that Psalm says, is it, as the arrow are in the hands of the mighty man. He's not talking about a man, he's talking about a mother. He says, so are the children of her youth. What the mother does is, I know where my children are supposed to be. I know where my son is supposed to be. I know where my daughter is supposed to be. I know how to place them. Mothers place their children. Place them at the strategic places. Place them at the right places. You know, the Bible says something about, if you look at Luke 18 verse 1, it says, men ought always to pray and not faint. And you'll be thinking he's talking about man. The next thing you hear, a woman. There was a woman. You didn't read that? Men ought always to pray and not for him, but he said there was a woman. Because men are not tenacious in what they want, but the woman will stay and she gets it. Are you hearing me? Do you know that if men were meant to carry children as women are carried, we will all be taking our own after four months. Said, remove it. Let it stay in the incubator. But the woman said, I'll carry her. I'll carry him full time. I will hold on. Women, can we celebrate mothers? One of the things, one, a true mother, when it comes to their children, does not hear no. Does not hear no. Do you know no does not work for a mother when it comes to their children? No mother accepts no. In, John, in Matthew 15 from verse 22, the Bible talks about a Canaanite woman who came to Jesus Christ and said to Jesus, he says, my daughter is grieved with the devil and Jesus refused to attend to her. Jesus mocked her. He says the miracles, uh, he said we will not give those that have belonged to children to dogs. He called her dog. He said, yes, I'm willing to answer dog, but my daughter must. A woman will do anything, will not hear no. When it comes to their children, they are willing to go any man. They are willing to do anything. No mother gives up on their children. I said, no mother gives up on their children. They see them become the purpose and plan and purpose. Even Mary, the Bible said, Mary kept in her heart the prophecy that was said of Jesus Christ. Every time you pray for a child, the mother is hearing. No mother gives up. No mother hears no. I close with this. The first thing I said to you, a mother knows their children. Secondly, a mother knows where to keep their children, where to place their children. The third one, a no mother takes no for their children. They take no. They don't take no. They don't. Do you know that it's only men that say that they will disown their children? You will never hear a mother say, I will disown my child. 
While you are shouting this on, the woman will call the child from the corner and say, don't mind, I'll talk to him. You know, this child will never come to this house. The mother will go and say, you will call, don't worry, come from the back. Isaac said to Esau, go and prepare me venison that I will eat. And, and, and Rebecca said to Jacob, I will prepare it for you. You go and give to your father. When a mother really wants the child to be in a place, no power, they will go anywhere. They will take all land. I can't forget as I ran up, my mother, while we're growing up as young children. So, you know, my mother heard that um, this is one of the best schools for girls in our city then. We we're in Benin City, St. Maragorothy. It's the best school for girls to go to. So my mother decided that my sister will attend that school. And, you know, you know, as men will be, my dad know they will tell her because you have to be from certain class to go to that school in those days. At least uh, down there and the girls, Esther will know. We live in Benin City. You have to be in that, that class that qualifies you for that school. We are not in that class. But it is my dad who is not in that class. But my mom, she's in any class that, as long as it takes to be her children. And one day, my mom woke, got up in the morning and told my sister, I said, dress up, we're going to that school. Those were the days where the principals of the school were nuns, Irish nuns. So they were white. And this is my mom who is not very proficient in the Queen's English. It's not that she's not educated. Listen to me. The ability to speak English does not show that you are educated. English is a foreign language. Are you hearing me? So you cannot call one who cannot speak English. Listen to me. Can you speak French? Can you speak Spanish? Can you speak Zulu? Can you speak Bini? Can you speak Igbo? So when you cannot judge my education or my, my literacy based on the fact that I can speak your language. So we can't say my, my mom was educated in her language. Yes. So, you know, sometimes we, when people make mistakes trying to speak the Queen's English, you say they are not. No, they, they should be making mistakes. But when they make mistakes in their native dialect, then that's a problem. Because education, you can't go to Paris and begin to tell people that you, ah, you don't know English, you're not educated. For what? In Paris, they all speak French. If you go to Spain, they speak Spanish. Hallelujah. So she was not, she didn't have time to waste with the Queen's English. It was a waste of time and effort. Hallelujah. But the thing is that the person she is going to communicate with is somebody who was sent by the queen. And the only English, the person knows is Queen's English. So my mom went with my sister. My dad would have gone to walk and hide. See which kind of woman is this? You know, if I know what I know now, I would have married a woman who is not literate in Queen English. Truth. Because those people are fearless. They don't even know. They, they can't be disgraced. Hallelujah. So my mom went and backed my younger one and my sister. They went. When they got down from taxi, and for you to go to that school, you need to actually drive into the school. But this one is at no very... We don't, we don't. She stopped from taxi and it was raining. Cat and dog. Cat and dog. And she took my sister in her hand and got to the secretary. I want to see the principal. The secretary was speaking English. You know, thank God she's not very proficient in that because she would have stopped with where the secretary is. Where the secretary was staying. Ma Madam, you don't have an appointment. My mom doesn't want to know what appointment is. She walked into the principal office. And said to the principal, my daughter, this school, go. What happened? My daughter, this school, Go. Ebere, give them your name. Ebere, give them your name. The white woman began to write the name. <laughs> because where this woman is coming from, what this woman is doing, I don't know. <laughs> For peace to reign. No, my, this woman should have known that the people that attend this school are people from the higher echelon. But this kind of person that has only three walls and even is commanding. That is how my sister became, attended that school. I've come to say to mothers, instead of complaining for what has not happened to your children, take your children to that place and say, my son, this place, stay. My daughter, 
this place stay. Stand up to your feet. Speak too much English. You are filling out forms. That is why they reply you with forms. I pray this morning. And I pray this morning. I said, God, every mother under the sound of my voice, whatever they request, do it for them. I'm not going to, you know, they say, I'm not going to pray for you, but I have prayed for you, mothers. I want you to take this moment because I've asked God that whatever you lift up your voice to speak, to ask as we celebrate mothers today, let that be part of your celebration. So take this minute and open your mouth and begin to lift up your voice. Let heaven hear your voice. Everything that is needed for the answer to your prayer, everything that is needed for the answer to your request. The Bible says when the woman prayed, the joy said, for because of her continuity, her persistence, because of her persistence and consistency, I will do what she requests. In John 15, Jesus said, I have never seen such a faith, not but in Israel. Can a mother lift up their voice in faith and say, my turn for my family has come. My children will be positioned. My husband will be positioned. My family will be positioned. Can somebody lift up their voice and pray? Le Cadosa, Le Brato, Today is Mother's Day, 2024 Mother's Day. We'll mark a transformation. We'll mark a change. We'll mark a lifting. We'll mark a rising. Le Cado Sarigadia. Roko Zetegede. Mokora Zuka Ligadosha. Le Caboda Sonde Kelida Rosa. Le Prada Yagada Rosa. Le Shatayada. Icarando Sekelia, Brados Kelegadosha, Lekezadusa, in Jesus' mighty.